Good morning, my name's Simon from Lumar. Today's video is an instructional video on how to replace Lumar's latest ultra low profile hatch, which is a direct replacement for a low profile or a medium profile. Uh, it may require some modifications on the fixings. Uh, apart from that, it's a fairly DIY process. So step one is to remove the old hatch. Take out all the fixings on the frame and then uh, pry the hatch off the boat. On this occasion, we have 10 fixings, Phillips screws. So I simply need a Phillips screwdriver. There may be a possibility of two fixings on the frame. It could be sicker flexed in or it could be bedding tape. You may require the use of a pry bar. So on this occasion, uh, we're very fortunate that it's been laid down with bedding tape. So I can actually ease it up from my thumb, place my pry bar in, and then just work my way around, around until it's free. And then remove the hatch from the aperture. So the residue that's left on the frame, you need to clean up. And that can be a combination of a metal scraper or you can actually use um, plastic scrapers just to try and get all the residue away from the frame prior to preparing to fit the new one. Once you're happy that it's clean and it's good to work with, we can then offer the new hatch in place and mark the uh, mounting holes. Okay, so I'm happy that's clean. Alcohol wipe to prepare the surface, just to make sure you've got all the residue off. So with the ultra low profile, open the handle, and then where the handle is, ease the frame away from the acrylic. You'll see it start to open. Once you've got it open, in this manner, the customer has discussed having the frame in this orientation. So we're just gonna place it into, its, into the original hole and you'll see it's actually a very good fit. Once you're happy with the placement, mark the holes ready for drilling. Okay, so at this stage, we're ready to mark frame mounting holes. Placed it in the ideal position. We're very fortunate on this occasion that we managed to pick up three original mounting holes. Rather than mark the boat or the frame, I'm just placing some temporary tape just to give me an indication of um, which holes I'm going to reuse. Okay, and then take the frame and place it to one side. So, as you can see, there's a number of holes that we're not gonna use, and we need to backfill these um, to allow, just to make them watertight again. We're gonna use a two-part epoxy to fill these holes in. We're using a 15 minute two part epoxy. We're mixing it on here, apply it to the holes, allow it to set, and then you may have to sand the epoxy back to try and get a reasonably flat finish. Make sure you mix it well. And then just fill the holes that are not required. Make sure you stay inside the line of the frame, otherwise you'll see this. And then I'm just gonna use this small tool to try and get it as flat as possible.
Okay, now you let the epoxy settle and uh, go off and then we'll revisit it, sand it flat. So at this stage, the, uh, the epoxy's gone off. We need to just sand back the high spots. On this occasion, I've got a multi-tool with a sanding uh, end, but you can use uh, sandpaper and do it by hand. It's entirely your choice. We're just gonna take the high spots away. That's all we're gonna do. So that's good to go. Next stage is to uh, drill the mountain holes. I've got a handy hoover just to be able to clear up as we go. And I've marked my depth holes on the drill. Just so, I mean, it's a fairly thick piece of GRP, but it just gives you a good indication of when the hole's at the correct depth. So at this stage, we've drilled all the mounting holes. What we need to do now is a, is a nice bed of uh, Sika uh, 295 UV resistant Sika Flex and put a generous bead around the line of the screw holes. You want the frame to take up most of the bead. One continuous sweep around the hatch. And don't worry if it squeezes out when you're bolting the frame down because that's what you want. Any low spots, just put, put a little bit more. You can always clean up the excess afterwards. Okay, ready to put the hatch into the frame. On this occasion, the owner's asked for the hatch to open in this orientation. You can have it in that orientation. It's entirely your choice. So we're, we're going with the hinge on the outboard side. And then just line it up. And what you want is the sicker flex to come out of the mounting holes. And that provides a barrier between the screw and the frame. Okay, so on this occasion, we're good to go. So we're just cleaning the back edge off. Um, you'll notice in a second when we lift the lid up, the back edge actually falls beyond the um, edge of the frame and where we've got the sicker bead has oozed out nicely at the back. You don't want the sicker to pick up on the back of the frame, it's just more cleaning. So at this point you can lift the frame up and then carry on with the remainder of the fixes. bit tricky to get to the two rear screws but as long as you start them then you can close the lid slightly you'll see the gap opens up bigger at the back and you you can get into them and you'll notice on the on the frame you've got the sicker flexes oozing out which means you've got a good clamp uh, and a good seal uh, now it's just a case of cleaning up we're using a generic uh, isopropyl wipe um, just to clean up the excess you can see that on the screw holes, it's, it's oozing out through, which gives, you a, which gives you a barrier between the frame and the stainless steel screw. You can clean the top off quite easily. At this stage, the installation's complete. Frame cleanup's good. You need to check inside. The hinge that hangs down can sometimes catch the silicon as you go through, so prudent to give it a wipe on the base of that hinge. And that's the job done. Once you've got to this stage, it's always prudent to just lock the hatch, leave it overnight for 12 hours, 24 preferably if you can, um, just to let everything uh, cure and go off. 
and, and you're done. So a short period of time without opening the hatch would be, would be uh, good practice.